Chapter 24, Losing Marlon, I still don't know why you're here, I said crossly. Today of all days, I didn't want any company while I swam. Today was too important. I was scared, but determined. Touching the bottom of the pool was like tossing a coin. Heads I win, tails I lose. I like to swim occasionally too, Marlon replied. But it's not even Tuesday. You and the others only ever come swimming on a Tuesday. Marlon smiled at me. There's no law that says I can't come swimming on a Thursday instead. I was about to argue, but I thought better of it. If I protested too much, Marlon might realise I was up to something. But I was still annoyed. I bundled my bag and my clothes into the locker and banged it shut. So what have you been doing here every afternoon, anyway? Asked Marlon as we both made for the pool. Just kicking about swimming. I've been trying to build up my strength and stamina. Swimming is a brilliant exercise, I replied, in what I hoped was an offhand manner. Fancy a race. Just a width, but underwater, Marlon challenged. Under normal circumstances, I'd have snatched his hand off. But these were hardly normal circumstances. I didn't want to waste any of my energy on a race. I knew I didn't have that much energy to spare. I smiled. Maybe later. I sat down at the edge of the pool and slipped into the water. It was cool, verging on cold, and made, and made me gasp. I held onto the bar which ran around the side of the pool and kicked out leisurely with my legs to warm myself up a little. Marlon dived straight in and immediately struck out for the other end, edge of the pool. I watched him for a few moments. I was so glad Nan had talked some sense into me. It was a pain that Marlon had insisted on coming to the pool with me today, but I was glad we were still friends. I think if it hadn't been for Nan, I might never have been a, never have had the sense enough to let go of my anger. It was strange the way things turned out. Before my heart operation, everything had seemed clear. I didn't have long to live, so I knew what my priorities were, my family and my friends. Yet after my operation, for a while, my priorities had become completely messed up. So what was important to me now? I couldn't see past touching the bottom of the pool. My friends had all done it, but that wasn't the reason. It was a challenge I had issued to myself. It was my way of proving that I was as good, as healthy, as deserving of life as anyone else. I looked across the pool. Marlon had almost reached the other side. I'd have to act fast. This was it, now or never. Do it now, while I was still fresh and had the energy. I let go of the bar and began to tread water. One, two, three, go. I swam to the middle of the pool, took several deep breaths and dived down and down and down. I didn't stop, even when my lungs screamed at me for air, even when my heart shrieked at me to turn back, even when my blood roared at me to stop. I kicked my legs and went down further and I touched the bottom. It was icy cold beneath my fingers, but I had reached it. Elated, I turned round and kicked against the bottom of the pool to give myself an extra push back to the surface. Except the surface was a long way away and halfway up through the water, I knew I wasn't going to make it. Consequences. Chapter 25 walking on the moon. When I opened my eyes, I was laying flat and a brilliant white light was blinding me. I thought I was dead. I really did. Until I heard a scraping sound beside me and then Dad's anguished face swam into focus above my own. I smiled at him, but he didn't seem to see it. He stared at me, misery clouding his eyes. I tried to speak to tell him. I was glad to see him, but my mouth didn't seem to want to work. I'm all right, Dad. I hope my eyes told him what my mouth could not. In fact, I was better than all right. I was alive. Rest could wait. I closed my eyes and fell asleep. When I woke up, Mum, Dad, Nan, Dr Elric and Dr Bryce were all standing around my bed. What happened? I whispered, confused. Then I remember the swimming pool. How did I get out of the pool? Marlon saved your life. Mum told me, her expression grim. Oh, first Dr Bryce? Then Marlon, I tried to laugh, but my throat was still hurting. 
It's not funny, Cameron, said Dad. When you get out of here, you and I are going to have a long talk. And at that, Mum burst into tears. Mum, don't cry. Please don't cry. I tried to sit up, but I didn't have one gram of strength left, strength for my body. Mum, you'll upset Alex. Please don't cry. I'm okay now. Really, I am. Cameron. Dr. Price began. He and Dad looked at each other across my bed, and I knew in that instant what was coming. Cameron, your body is rejecting your new heart. Is that why I've been feeling tired and sick? How long have you been feeling that? Dr. Bryce asked me sharply. Just a week or so. Why on earth didn't you say? Why didn't you tell me the truth yesterday? We could have taken you into hospital. We could have amended your anti-rejection drug therapy earlier. Dr. Bryce said distraught. That wasn't exactly why I hadn't said anything. I needed to finish what I'd started. It's not his fault, it's yours, Mum ranted on Dr. Bryce. Why did it take you a week to get the results of his last blood tests? The first set of results got contaminated, Dr. Bryce answered. We had to run all the tests again. Mum, it's okay, I smiled. It wouldn't have made any difference. You don't know that, said Dad. And yes, he was right. I didn't know that, not for sure, but I felt it was right. I was right. So what happens now, I whispered. Do you give me more anti-rejection drugs? I don't think we can do that. It would just postpone the inevitable. Your heart is fighting a losing battle. The only way forward now is to have another heart transplant. And we have to do the act within the next few days before you become too weak to survive any surgery. Another pig heart transplant, I asked. Yes, of course. Is that the only way? Asked Dad. I'm afraid so. I don't think Cameron's heart will last much into the new year otherwise, said Dr. Bryce. I smiled at him. I liked the way he was as blunt as ever. Poor man didn't look any happier than my mum and dad. I realised that his brusque manner was his way of coping with things. He must have been through a lot with all the abuse he'd received over the years, with all the abuse he was probably still receiving. How's the other heart pa transplant patient doing? I asked. She's doing fine. It took her longer to recover than you, but now she's making excellent progress, Dr. Bryce replied. Good, I'm glad. And I was. I'd hate for your research to have to stop now. Dr. Bryce turned to my mum and dad. I've spoken to the senior registrar here, and she reckons Cameron can probably go home tomorrow. Saturday, Sunday, at the latest. I think if we arrange for Cameron to come back to the clinic on Tuesday, we'll schedule the surgery for Wednesday. Dr. Bryce... I don't want another heart transplant operation. Dr. Bryce wasn't the only one who was shocked at my words. He frowned deeply. What are you talking about? I don't want another operation. Why not? Cameron, what are you saying? Cameron, you can't give up now. Cameron, have you thought about this? The only one who didn't jump down my throat was Nan. Mum, Dad. I don't want another transplant, I said. It's hard to explain, but try, Mum said immediately. It really was strange the way things worked out. Mum had been so against the operation at the beginning, and now she was the one really pushing me to have another one. Would it make a difference if your second transplant was from a human donor rather than a pig? Dr. Elric asked me. No, I replied at once. No difference at all. Then why not? asked Mum. Dr. Bryce, if I had the second operation, how long would I have to take all those drugs you've been giving me? Probably the rest of your life. But isn't it worth it if they keep you alive? But they're making me sick and I'm beginning to get tired all the time. It's like before my operation. But as I said, we can fine tune the dosage until we hit upon a drug regime that suits you, Dr. Bryce argued. I don't want the rest of my life to be made up of pills and potions and injections and nothing else. I don't want to feel sick and tired all the time. That won't necessarily happen, said Dr. Elric. But the second transplant has less chance of succeeding than the first. Dad frowned. Where did you hear that? I read it on the internet, I said. You can't believe everything you read, Dad told me. You know that. Yeah, I know that. But a while ago... Mum said something about me being special. She told me that I'm not just special because of my heart and I shouldn't think that. 
but I began to. I began to think that my new heart was all I was. That's why I wanted to touch the bottom of the swimming pool, to prove to myself I was something more. Dr Bryce shook his head. I don't understand. I'm not sure I understand myself, I admitted. All I know is, it's the quality of your life that counts, not the quantity. I've been very lucky so far, and thank you for everything you did for me, Dr Bryce. I really do appreciate it. But enough is enough. I want my life back, even if it's only for another few months. And what about Alex? Mum asked. I'm going to try to hang on long enough to see her or him. After that, whatever happens, happens. So you're going to give up, Dr Elric said. Of course he isn't. He just wants to fight in his own way, said Nan. I knew Nan would understand. But I'm not going to stop taking the anti-rejection treatments, I said. They'll just slow down the process. They won't stop it, Dr Bryce protested ve vehemently. Cameron... Your body will still reject your heart and you'll, all you'll do is buy yourself a few more months. That's all I want, I smiled. I want to be able to say goodbye to Alex in person. I don't think you've thought this through, Dr Bryce began. I turned, I sorry, I tuned him out of my head. I looked up at Nan. She smiled at me and took my hand. I want to speak to Cameron alone. Could you all disappear for a while, she said. Reluctantly, Mum and Dad. Oops, sorry, I'm leaning on my knee. And the others left me, left my bedside. You do understand, don't you, Nan? I asked anxiously. I hadn't been wrong about that. Oh yeah, Nan sat down on the side of my bed. You set yourself a goal, and now you've achieved it. You've touched the bottom of the swimming pool. Something in her voice kept me silent. It's a shame you never knew your grandfather. You were named after him, you know. I nodded. I know. He died of lung cancer. I knew that too. What was Nan driving at? He wanted to live so much, he tried everything. He finally gave up his precious cigarettes, although he left that too late. He'd had chemotherapy, drugs, you name it, he tried it. He wasn't going to give up. And you think that's what I'm doing? Well, you've touched the bottom of the swimming pool, Nan smiled. What else have you got to live for? What else is there worth fighting for? I frowned at her. That's not how it is. I know, Nan said gently. You feel sick and we both know you'll probably get sicker. You're in pain and it'll probably get worse. Is this meant to make me change my mind? I raised my eyebrows. It's meant to make you think, Cameron. Life is very, very precious. Don't let go of it. I watch my granddad fight and lose, but at least he fought. He fought every step of the way. Can you say the same? I turned my head away from her, disappointed. Nan's gentle fingers turned my head to face her again. Cameron, you've touched the bottom of the pool and good for you. If that's what keeps you going, find another challenge and another one after that. And another one after that. I'm not going to lose you, too. Beside, the world needs more Camerons. I looked at Nan. My eyes were hurting. I'm so tired, I whispered. I know. And I'm scared, I admitted. I know that too. But Cameron, dear, you've allow you're allowed to be scared. You're just not allowed to give up. Not without a good fight. So put your fists up and come out slugging. Silence. I can't. I turn my head away again. Cameron, no, Nan. I've tried and tried and I can't. I faced her and it's one of the hardest things I ever had to do. I don't want to drag this out any longer than necessary. Please don't ask me to. Once I've seen Alex, I'll be happy. Nan leaned back in her chair. She didn't smile. She didn't frown. Her face was a mask as she studied me. I knew she was disappointed. She sighed and stood up. Cameron, I could talk to you till I'm blue, green, purple in the face, but it wouldn't make any difference, she said. I would give my life if it meant you'd be well again, but it doesn't work that way. You have to want it. You have to fight. No one can do it for you, not even me. Just now you said 
to the doctors that I was fighting in my own way. I reminded her. Lying on your bed feeling sorry for yourself and getting ready to give up is one way of fighting. The easiest, the least productive, saddest way, Nan told me. Is accepting things as they really are, that's all. Rubbish, Nan retorted. You'll change your mind. I believe in your strength and your common sense. But as I said before, the final decision has to be yours. Just don't let me down or I'll have to give you a good swift kick. And I can do that too. Now, let me go and get your mum and dad. You have to decide what you're going to tell them. I wipe my eyes with the back of my hand as I watch Nan leave. Touching the bottom of the pool. It seems so silly now. It was hardly in the same league as walking on the moon or discovering penicillin or something like that. But it meant so much to me. Why? I mean, some people want to be millionaires when they grow up and they spend their whole lives trying to achieve that goal. Some people wanted children. Some want to be doctors or lawyers or, or drive a fire engine. Maybe deep down, so deep down that even I wasn't consciously aware of it, I had never expected this operation to work. Was that it? Or maybe I'd begun to suspect that something was going wrong in the last couple of weeks. Is that why I came up with something just outside my grasp? Something to work for? Something difficult to achieve, but not impossible? Touching the bottom of the pool was my version of walking on the moon. So what next? Nan was right. Only I could decide that.